hey there, what's wrong with you today? Why why do you have such a despair? Why are you so um, angry at what's going on in your life and around the world? You look at this country and you look at the things going on and you see no hope. You see no way out. You look at your own life and you go, I don't understand why I'm here. I don't understand why I'm in this place. What, what am I supposed to do to make a difference in this world? I can't even figure out who I am and what I'm supposed to do, much less help anybody else. If you feel that way, if you're looking at the world and, and, and you're thinking, I don't understand Planned Parenthood. I don't understand the abortion thing. I don't understand both sides. I don't understand the drug addiction problem in America. I don't understand why people are doing this or people are doing that. I don't understand why we just can't get along and love each other. I can't figure this thing out. And in my own life, you may be saying, I don't understand why I do the things I do. I don't understand why I have so many uh, faults and I believe I'm so guilt, guilt, guilt stricken before God. And I don't even understand if there really is a God and who is God. If there is one, if you feel like that in any way, the Bible specifically addresses that and many other things. And I want to share that with you. And it's simple. You know, I've been digging in the word. I've been going, Lord, we need, we need something. We need, we need to know what's going on. People need to know what's going on. I want to help people. I don't want to get on here and be condemning. I don't want to be mean. I want to be loving. But God, we need the truth. I, what can we do and say that's going to make a difference? And he carried me back to the most simplest form of the gospel because the gospel is the, the, the remedy for this world. That's what God himself, the creator of this world, and then later on this world was just turned into a, a fallen place because of sin. This is the remedy that he prescribed for the world, his world. It's in John, the third chapter, starting in verse 16, most familiar scripture in, in the word of God, I guess, in my, in my opinion, and many others. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth the truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, and they are wrought in God." Plain and simple, this world is a dark place. Sin has blinded everyone. The Bible says the God of this world has blinded people unless they would see the, the glorious gospel. In other words, if we don't share the gospel and if the Holy Spirit doesn't open their eyes, they won't get it. They'll never see it. Just like me, just like you. If you're born again, you understand that God had to lift the veils. Planned Parenthood will never tell you of the great guilt and shame that you will carry the rest of your life for murdering a baby and calling it abortion or procedure. A drug a, a drug dealer will never tell you that, hey, when I say these drugs, it's going to wreck your home, wreck your family, wreck your life. You're going to rob, steal, kill, whatever you have to do to get this. And eventually you'll probably even OD. They're not going to tell you that. Al people that sell alcohol, they're not going to say, you know what, if you abuse this and you keep going the way you're going, you're eventually going to get a DUI, possibly kill a family on vacation somewhere, or end up laid up in an alley somewhere, lost everything you got because you turned into an alcoholic and now you're homeless. And I could just go on and on. I could go on and on with what's happening in the world with politics. The pol politicians are not going to tell you, look, we have an agenda. We'd rather see what, get the most we can for ourselves. We could really care less about you and what we say. It's more about the system and what we live in. It's all about the almighty and many preachers today will not stand in the pulpit and tell you that, look, sin has consequences. Sin's going to cost you something. It will cost you everything. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. My whole point of this whole video is this. God saw that the world was in complete darkness. He saw that the world could not help, it, help itself and that people in the world could not direct others on how to help themselves. He had to send his son, Christ, to come to the cross and die for our sins. And then he goes on to say through this word that he would be rejected because they don't like the light. 
They like the darkness. They like being hid in their darkness and their sin. They like the way things are because their flesh glories in that. Our flesh glories in sin. But sin will cost you everything. It will cost you your flesh to die. It will cost you to be cursed. And it will cost your soul to be cast into eternal hell and for all eternity. God sent His Son so you wouldn't have to go there. God sent His Son so you could be delivered in this life, so you could see the truth, so you could be opened up and understand that you're not here to serve yourself, but you're here to serve others. You're here to worship God and glorify God with your life. But what we see mostly coming from pulpits and coming from churches and coming from so-called Christians that call themselves Christians is, you know, it's, it's more about politics. It's more about a vote. It's more about money, making a living. It's more about being successful and getting ahead. None of that stuff is what God's about. God's about souls. God's about bringing people out of darkness into the light. That's the reason Jesus come. What I just read to you is the Bible in a nutshell. What I just read to you is exactly what's wrong in America, what's wrong in the world, and what the remedy is, and what God expects us to do, and also to show us what's going to happen. Because men are going to get angry and reject the gospel because they like their deeds are evil. They want to stay in the darkness. But nevertheless, we're to keep coming. We're to keep coming. We're to keep coming with what? With love. And love is the truth of Jesus Christ and him crucified on the cross. Greater love hath no man than this, than he lay his life down for his friends. Jesus Christ laid his life down for you and me when we were at our worst. When, you were, when I was out there paying for an abortion or you were out there getting an abortion, or you were alcoholic, or you were in an adulterous affair, or whatever we might have been doing, whatever everybody might have been doing in their life, Jesus Christ saw it, knew you'd do it, and died on the cross for you anyway. Why? Because he loves you today. He loves you with a love that you can't understand, a love that I can't explain, and a love that you can't really experience fully until you get in his presence. And I believe that's why people in heaven would never come back to this place if they could, because they're in so much joy that it's unspeakable and full of glory in the presence of God, in His love. You don't know that love today? You want to know it? You can have it. You can have just as much as your body can hold, and that is to simply repent of your sins, believe on Jesus Christ, and ask Him to save you. Be born again, and God will remove that sin, that guilt, that shame. I don't care what it is. I don't care how bad it is. God will forgive you. He'll set you free, and he'll fill you with his love and his joy and his peace. Will you be perfect? Heck no. Will you want to be perfect? You'll do your best, but sometimes you won't even want to be. Sometimes you'll want to just fall out and just do what everybody else does. Why? Because your flesh is going to war against your spirit. It's going to be a battle to the end. But the difference is you don't walk alone. You don't walk in darkness. You walk in the light. And as you walk in the light, you can see people in darkness here. You can see people in darkness over there. And you'll say, you know what? I've got a choice. I could go back into darkness and meddle in that, or I could stay on the narrow path. All these people on the broad path don't have a clue, but God delivered me. He showed me there's a different way, and I'm going to stay true to Him. And if I fall, if I mess up, if I sin, He says if I confess my sins, He's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me and from all unrighteousness. That's the God we serve. That's the God we need to be preaching. That's the God we need to be standing up and proclaiming to this lost, dark, dying world. Because that's the only thing that's going to change anybody's heart and set anyone free from whatever it is in their life that's destroying them. And that is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in His sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. Please share this.